Hello YouTube, XCT here. In this video we are solving Hutch from PG Practice. For user we will get credentials from LDAP and use them to upload the web shell via webdev. For root we will read the lab's password for the intended way and then explore other methods. So as always we start with a port scan. Um, we can see that there's DNS and 8080, so we are likely dealing with a domain controller, a couple of default Windows ports and also a website on port 80, which we'll have a look at in a second. Let's look at the nmap version output here. And here we can actually see the domain, which is hutch.offsec. So this is all we get for a port scan, I guess. Let's have a look at the website. And here we just get a default um, iOS page, nothing too interesting. Let's see, maybe we can connect to SMB anonymously. But this isn't working. Um, one other thing we can do is LDAP search, just like that we know the domain so we can say dc equals hutch dc equals offsec and we want to get all attributes and here we give it the ip um, which i have in my host file under hutch.pg and also hutch.offsec and things like that let's see here we get an awful lot of output um, like all the users um, in the domain and so on um, but at the very bottom here, conveniently, um, we can see there's a user called Freddy McSawley. And it, it has a description here in Elder, which is saying that the password was set to crab shark jellyfish. Um, so let's copy that. And also we want to get the SAM account name, which is FMC Solly. So now we have credentials. Um, the only um, thing we have to find out is where to use them. Um, one way would be with SMB client. We can try that. Then we copy in the password. And we can see that this authentication worked. Um, in contrast to before, now we can list the shares. We don't have any special permissions and there's no um, custom share here, so we probably won't get far. Um, another thing I always try is um, Want to try if we can win our MS this user. Sometimes you're lucky and it works, um, but this time it won't. So we won't have any luck here. So one other way to use these credentials would be to use um, them for LDAP, right? So we do it like that. We can give it the username and the password uh, with the syntax, basically. Um, the rest is like before. And now we just have to tell it um, which attribute we are interested in. And on this box, there's actually labs running. And even if I wouldn't know that, um, it's something um, you can always try. So let's do that here. And we are actually able to get the administrator password here because, well, the user is allowed to read the labs password. So essentially now we should be able to win a RAM as an administrator. And here we go. We are an admin. We can go to the desktop. We have proof.txt. And probably somewhere in users, probably here we have the local.txt. So that's one way to do it, but it's a pretty long shot to look for the um, labs password if you don't know that labs is running. So I will also show um, the, I guess, normal way to do it. So for the attended way, um, if you actually do a version script scan of port 80, we will see something interesting. And here we go. We can see that um, web dev is enabled. And this means we should be able to connect via web dev. Um, and maybe this web dev has some interesting files, right? So let's try to connect. Um, the default tool on Kali to do that is Kadava. So let's do that one. And we can see it wants credentials. So let's try the one we already got here. And now we actually got access to the web root. This is pretty good for us. Um, we should be able to upload a um, web shell here if we have the permissions. So let's try that. Um, just going for test.txt. Let's see if we can write it here. And this works. So we have write access to the web root. And now we should find our file here. Yes, this works. So the question is now what kind of file we want to write. Um, you could write like a normal ASPX command shell, um, which is totally fine. Um, but if you're dealing with AV, which is not the case in this case, but might be on Neverbox, um, it might be a good idea to modify that. So I put together my own one here. Um, 
And it's basically just um, using C sharp, which you are doing with this script language C sharp here. And then we can just write um, any C sharp code here that will be executed when the page loads. And in this case, I'm using the, um, just a normal process start up to start PowerShell and then send an encoded command. Um, for the command itself, let's actually create that. So we're using Cyberchef to encode um, my kind of to go default payload, which is just um, getting run.txt from my system and then executing it. And now we just got to copy the base64 here and put it here. And this should be good. So let's upload that. Um, also, there's now a web server here and we have to have some run.txt, right? So let's actually edit that. Um, I prepared that already. That is my default um, web shell. So just got to adjust the IP here. Um, this is actually a, a one-liner uh, web shell you can find back basically anywhere um, to make it bypass AV. Um, the only thing you really have to do is to change the prompt here from the default one into something else. And then it should be good at the moment. So now we start a listener here. We already uploaded the file, so we just have to call it now. So let's do that. And I forgot to start the web server. Do that as well. You can see the hit on our run.txt, so the file was grabbed and executed. And here we indeed um, get the shell, and we are the default Apple user. Let's check our privileges. And we have the SC impersonate privilege because that's default, and we could exploit that probably with EFS Potato, or if the Prince Ruler service is enabled, we could also use um, like Prince Boofer or one of the other potatoes, doesn't really matter. Um, or at this point, we can also enumerate the box, like this is the intended way. Basically, we go to program files. We see that labs is installed. So at this point, you go back and read the labs password if you haven't tried it before. So as far as unintended path goes, there's one more way I want to show. And this is using Rubio's with TGT delegation, um, which allows us to get a usable TGT for the current user. And if you remember, we are this Apple user. And the interesting thing is, if you get a TGT for this user, you actually get the one from the machine account because these um, virtual accounts authenticate over the network as the machine account. And since we get the TGT of the machine account, we can use that to do secret stump and basically get all the hashes from the system. This is a pretty cool trick um, I learned recently from Who Am I? Um, I always exploited the SEM personal privilege, but this one was pretty cool as well. So we're going to explore that one here. So let's create a folder. And the first thing we have to do here is get Rubius. And then we really just run Rubius um, TGT Delec and no wrap. And this gives us the TGT of the machine account. So let's save that here. And now we got a converted from base64 into the decoded form. This looks good. And now we can use ticket converter to actually convert that Kirby file into a Zcash file. Like that. Now we have this Zcash file here and we can actually export it. Um, like that, taking the current path and the file name. And now if I do klist, we can actually see that we have the ticket loaded here into the ticket cache. One thing to do here is, in case the time is not synchronized, which is probably not the case here, it's a good idea to just use NTP date here to synchronize the time with the target. And here we can see it got synchronized, but there isn't a huge uh, difference, so it doesn't really matter. And for the last step, now that we have this TGT, we can just use secret stump and should get all the hashes. Um, just like that, you give it the user, which is the machine account. You give it here the target, which is the domain controller, um, also the IP, and dash K to use the ticket instead of providing credentials. Let's do that. And here we go, it's working. We get all the hashes, um, including the local administrator hash is here. And now we should be able to just uh, win our RAM again, um, passing the hash instead of specifying the labs password like we did earlier. 
And here we go, we are administrator again. So this is an alternative way um, that will also work from using um, virtual accounts. So this is it from my side. If you liked the video, please subscribe, click the like button and see you next time.